Hey everyone, this is our first data structures video, and in this video we're going to be making our first C++ program. It'll be a simple hello world, and we'll be comparing it to Python because that's what was covered in the CS1 videos. That was the language that was used there. And in Python it's pretty simple, right? So let's go to a Python file really quick. We'll do a print hello world. Um, you know, save it. And if we run that in the console, it's something kind of like Python 3 or the terminal, sorry, uh, hello, what we call it, hello world, dot py. We run it, we got hello world. Um, so in Python, it's pretty simple. Um, C++, we got to do a couple other things. So it's a little different. In C++, first and foremost, we need to import the library, that, which basically allows us to write to the console. So let me put in the first line, we'll go over it. So include io stream. So first and foremost, what you'll see is this pound or this hashtag uh, character. That's the first key we put when we're about to include a library in our C++ program, and then followed by the word include. Um, and then within the less than sign and the greater than sign, we have this uh, keyword, uh, or this library, which we call IOStream. Um, so in C++, IOStream basically allows us to read console input and write console input. So that's what we're gonna basically use to print uh, to the terminal in the end. Um, so we have this library now, and from here we have to create a function to print hello world. So unlike Python, um, we have to basically start our C++ program in a function. And in that function is where we're gonna basically uh, print hello world. And um, we, we typically call this, um, in most cases, the main function, right? So it looks something kind of like this. Uh, first and foremost, We'll go over a few things in the end. Um, but just to start, we're going to use this uh, keyword std colon colon c out std, or we'll put in hello world here. And line. And so basically, the first thing you're going to notice here is in our main we have this um, this operation called C out, right? C out basically stands for console out. That's basically the object that will allow us to print hello world. Um, and then we also have something else called end L. So end L basically allows us to, once we output, to create a new line. So in Python, when we print something, by default, it's gonna output to the next line and it basically creates a, a new line uh, after printing. Not in C++, we have to explicitly state that we don't want to continue on the same line that we're currently outputting to. Um, and then the std colon colon, that stands for standard, uh, meaning we're using C++'s standard library to reference these. So where is C out located? That's located in C++'s uh, standard library. And then additionally, we have these semicolons at the end. Uh, and in C++, we end our statements in a semicolon. So we have like down here when we return, that's also in a semicolon. Um, and so Another thing we'll notice is we have this at the beginning of the function, like kind of like Python, right? We have the name and we have a parentheses where we can put arguments in. But unlike Python, instead of having def right here, we have a type where we're putting int. And that's because in C++, when we create a function, we actually have to state which type we're returning at the end. So if you look here on line eight, we're returning the number zero, right? So because we're returning integers in this function, we have to tell C++ that this function, uh, when we define it, returns integers. Something you'll also see in this program is basically the fact that we're returning zero at the end of the main, even though that really returning that value has nothing to do with the objective of printing hello world. Um, and in C++, we return the number zero at the end of our main function as a way of basically saying our program was fully executed with no errors. So once we return zero at the end, we know we finished the program, we had no problems. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and let's run this. So we'll compile it first. And then we'll uh, run the executable. And we got hello world. So the same as before. Um, now it turns out, as you'll see right here, we have this std colon colon, as we we're saying, we're calling from the standard library. We don't have to explicitly write that. We could do something kind of at the top here that says using namespace standard, right? 
Uh, doing this basically allows us to not have to explicitly state each time we call C out in NDEL in our uh, program. It allows us to basically not have to state it's from standard. So if we run this again, we'll still get hello world. Um, however, in many cases, this is typically bad practice. And there's a handful of reasons, but let's say I work with two C++ libraries and they both have something with the same name. For example, let's say both libraries offer something called C out. Uh, we don't know which library that we're calling C out from, right? We could be calling it from the standard library or if we're including some other library that offers something called um, C out. Um, there's no way of stating which one uh, we're using. So basically, in general, for very simple programs where we may be using only the standard library, it's not that big of a deal. However, as we use more libraries, we may run into these types of problems. Now, lastly, there's also some um, optional arguments that we can put into this main function. Uh, for example, we can do int argc and char star argv like that, right? So basically what these two arguments allow us to do is basically handle um, input when we run it from the, the command line. So basically, let's say we want to add optional arguments such as we have a program and we want to give it special things such as uh, I want this program to work in a certain way. Let's say we have a math program and we want it to divide. And we're saying, okay, we're gonna use the divide component of this program. And we're also going to say, you know, maybe the two numbers we want to divide. So we'll have like a three and a two. Um, when we do that, we basically are passing through these arguments. Um, argc basically says how many arguments there are in total. So if we were to see out kind of like this, Let's see how argc. Well, how many arguments should there be? Let's go back. So it turns out the first one that when we run the uh, dot slash a dot out, that counts as one of them. Then we have divide, that's another argument we're throwing in. Then we have three and two. So there should be four in total. So let's uh, recompile, rerun. We have four, right? And then lastly, we have this argv, right? RV basically says, okay, now we know that there's four of them. What is each of those commands? Kind of like a, an array, we can reference them. So we have argv bracket. And in argv, we can basically reference. Uh, so if we want the first one, this would be index zero. Uh, if we want the keyword divide, that'd be index one. Three would be index two. Um, two would be index three. So let's do index three. And so we should be getting the number two here. Let's make sure that works. And yeah, so this is basically um, a very simple C++ program and how to handle arguments in the command line.